Well, Lechnerson, who was in the Mallorosa for five days, he's still in the top ten as well. Lechnerson started the day in eighth place. Tim and Arnsman at the front, who's in ninth place. 16 seconds from Lechnerson, but he's got a job to do. Yes, well, we can see here that uh, it's still... Arnsman is setting the pace, but for the rope where we see Brutago, this is a, you know, a concerning. We can see the spectators very much on the roadside. Mm. You know, the uh, riders will be made aware that the GC men, be careful, get into position before we get to that point because yeah, the road is going to oh, be very tight. Oh, sorry, Sean, it's your compatriot. Eddie Dunbar now just started to lose contact as well, and Thibaut Pinot might even be dreaming of the top five. Remember, Damiano Caruso in the red jersey started the day just 12 seconds behind Eddie Dunbar, and if Dunbar loses contact here and can't get back in touch, he'll be slipping to at least fifth again. Yes, and uh, you know, on this uh, final here, when you start losing contact, while well, it can go out to you know 20, 30 seconds very quickly, but uh, if Dunbar is working you know, to his power output, maybe just you know knocking it off a little bit for the moment, and you know possibly get back in there. But yet yeah, there's a lot of riders ahead of him, and this is the danger one because they will be informed of that as well. Almeida on the left-hand side. Keep your eye on this, because João Almeida starts to move to the front. And what happens here? Because Ahrensman can't react and take over. Now Kuss is going to think about it. We might be about to get movement in the GC at the Giro d'Italia. They've been tested. They've been bruised, battered and weathered, quite literally. But now it's on the dry slopes, high up in the Dolomites as we hit the 2,000 metres above sea level barrier. It's man against man, legs versus legs. The pink jersey is in play. It's those Portuguese supporters, they're going to go away. And this is João Almeida laying it on the line. Yes, he is uh, you know, starting to set a pace here and uh, yeah, slowly just uh, keep on working at it and see can he uh, put them in uh, in difficulty that he needs to do. But Geron Thomas you know, stuck to his wheel here, Roglic also in there, but there is uh, a, uh, quite a bit of uh, terrain to get to the line. If, if you get into difficulty, well, then you can lose many seconds here, but uh, everybody just following and... Yeah, we can see there. This is the point where I was talking about it just gets a little bit tight here. And now Roglic. Roglic. Now Roglic goes. There's the move, and Geraint Thomas has to react. Joao Almeida at the moment can't. Thomas with an acceleration, and Roglic on the pedals, dancing round the corner through the throngs of Slovenian fans. But it's a Welshman in pink who's straight onto his wheel, and that looks very, very good from Geraint Thomas. The podium's in play, and Sean, those three riders versus the rest, we're already seeing the difference. Yes, and we could see Geraint Thomas. He just waited for a moment to see was, uh, you know, uh, somebody else going to react, and uh, no to be Almeida, but not. Uh, so not at all, and we can see there he just goes to the Roglic very quickly, and we see Almeida now just uh, losing a little bit of ground here. Uh, we've seen that a lot of times. He just gets into the rhythm there, and uh, it'll depend on what they have left up here to uh, get to the finish line. Um, will Geron Thomas maybe try and push on in this final metres? Well, Thomas could really lay down a marker with the time trial tomorrow. I think he'd be pretty happy about having 29 seconds to take into that, although Primoz Roglic will tell him from the Planche de Belfi a few years ago that nothing is done until it's done. By the way, at the front of the race, Santiago Buitrago is now 500 metres away from winning the stage. And just 500 metres further down the road. As Sean said, it seems an eternity, but there's a kilometre to go. A kilometre for Primoz Roglic and Geraint Thomas to fight it out for seconds. Almeida started a comeback. By the way, behind you could see that Eina Rubio was working his way up towards the top ten in the GC as well. Caruso continues to advance, and that is the moment when Eddie Dunbar's position will be in trouble. A minute, though, Thomas is reacting really well. Here comes Almeida again. But even an attempt from him, maybe. Let's see. A look across at Roglic. A chat with Roglic. And here's Thomas on the wheel. Remember, we've seen Roglic have a slightly off day. Almeida failed to read his lines properly yesterday, but Thomas has been the consistent one. In pink, and looking pretty. 800 metres to the line. And how many riders are in the front here? 
time bonuses will they come into play because we've seen they're picking up riders this is Bronski, yep so that will be something that the riders will be made aware of here because yeah if there's a still a, a, a time bonus there, but I think there's a, you know, quite a few riders still in between our leader on the road. Adamsman now riding for GC as well, remember. He's trying to get under the wheel of Geraint Thomas. He too stands to shoot up in the standings. Started the day in ninth position. It's a stalemate there as we go to the top of the mountain. Almost five and a half hours. A special rider, and we saw that last year when he crashed, got back on his bike, caught up to the group, and won the mountain stage. Today, he's been up against a lot of riders who wanted to grab their last chance in the Giro d'Italia. It's not happened for his team in the GC, but they have been wonderful, wonderful players at this Giro d'Italia. For the second season in a row, Buitrago wins the stage. This time, it's at a legendary location, high in the Dolomites. Santiago Buitrago is the victor at Trecime di Lavaredo. And behind we fix our attention straight away for the final 500 metres of the fight for pink. As it stands, it will be Thomas to take a 29-second gap into the final time trial. And he's going to attack, he's going to go and try and extend that gap now. Roglic and company have to react. Geraint Thomas wants even more here. Geraint Thomas looking great. No talk at all of any weakness. Roglic is there. Almeida starts to fade. And now can he gap Roglic? Remember, any gaps towards the end here could see any number of differences in terms of seconds. Here's Derek G. Let's give him his moment because that is yet another second place. That's two sets of bonus seconds. Will anyone else cross the line before they get there? From my mind, caught Hepburn are still to be caught. This is Thomas. And Roglic is trying to fight to make sure there's no difference here. And Geraint Thomas is looking the strongest. Geraint Thomas might be about to gap Primoz Roglic because Roglic is having a fight. And remember, whatever happens tomorrow in the time trial, they do not want to give themselves any more. But Geraint Thomas here is looking every little bit like it's the Giro d'Italia. His moment finally. All of those years coming here. Unlucky, hurt. But Roglic has one dig left. There's Manus caught ahead. Roglic now going to attack around. Is there a chance for him to steal a second back? This is wonderful racing high up in the mountains. There might be a difference here. Look at this. Roglic, time ticks on. Two seconds, three perhaps back for Roglic. The fight goes to stage 20. It's going to be Primoz Roglic versus Geraint Thomas because Joao Almeida is going to lose more time.